I want to just come out and give my opinion. I don't give a rat's ass. I really do not care if Shane Dawson comes. I do not care if Shane Dawson goes. So Shane is back. I watched the whole thing. It, I guess I was expecting more of a story, but it was kind of just him rambling. I don't know what Shane's video is about. I don't know why he came back. I don't know what the deal is, but we're gonna find out. The Haunting of Shane Dawson is the name of the video, but he didn't get canceled because he can come back, get a million views in less than a day, and then... Hello everyone, it is me Salem. Welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? Y'all, I'ma just say this right here and right now. Today's video is going to be a little different because it is completely not scripted. For those of you who don't know, I script all my videos. I take like up to a week writing the script, doing research and doing all of this crazy stuff, you know, just to make a very good video. But today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I feel doesn't really need a script because I just need to get this off my chest, if anything. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but I haven't gotten around to talk about it because I low-key kind of don't care, but also like I still want to talk about it. Anyways, point is Shane Dawson, Shane Lee Yong, his real name, is back from being exiled to the VeggieTales Island of Perpetual Tickling. Like I said in my other video, everything I've ever found out about that man has been against my will. And you're probably wondering, why are people making it a big deal? People are making it a big deal because, I mean, do I even have to say? It seems like there's something going on in the influencer world where some people are just immune to facing their consequences and I am so over it. So that's basically what I'm gonna talk about today. We are going to be talking about Shane Dawson, his comeback, why I don't really care and why you shouldn't really care, why his comeback actually speaks volumes about influencer culture, his new series that is also still problematic. Today's video is not going to be too long and it's mostly going to be me ranting, but either way, sit back and relax, light up a candle, get snuggled up because we are going to go deep into this. But you guys know the drill. Before I even say any of this, I have to pay my bills. So here is a word from our sponsor, Warby Parker. Thank you to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and even contact lenses. Glasses start from $95, including prescription lenses, with amazing options such as progressives and blue light lenses. Don't let your FSA or HSA dollars go to waste. Put them to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. I ordered their try-on kit and it was such an easy process. You just answer a few quick questions online and Warby Parker will suggest some glasses to fit your face and style. Order five pairs of glasses and try them on for five days. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. These are the glasses that I ended up getting and I'm so glad that I was able to try them on before fully purchasing them because I actually love every single one. I think they're all super cute and cheap. Try Warby Parker's free home trial -on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy either, which is super cool. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash Salem. So if any of you guys grew up with like YouTube, prehistoric YouTube was this place filled with the OG OG influencers. Some people might even call them the titans of YouTube or the founding fathers of YouTube or what I like to call them, the list of people who have yet to be canceled because oh my God, even though these are all the titans of YouTube, literally every single influencer that has come out from this era has been canceled and I'm literally not kidding. People like Onision, uh, Tobuscus, PewDiePie, Smosh, Jenna Marbles, and people like Growy, Growy, what's the f is his name? Um, Joey Grisifiska. You know, how many years has this dude been on the platform and I still don't know how to pronounce his name? I don't care, it doesn't matter. He did blackface too. <laughs> and around this era of YouTube, the comedy, the pinnacle of comedy was to be very, very offensive. It was all about shock humor. This is also around the time where comedians like Tosh.0 was very, very popular. Daniel Tosh is a comedian who would review viral blogs, videos, 
influence, anything that had to do with, you know, the pop culture of the time, he was there to commentate on it. And he was known for his very intense, crude humor. And when it came to the world of YouTube, Shane Dawson kind of encapsulated that gross, offensive shock humor on the YouTube platform. Shane himself has said that his whole thing was to make people feel uncomfortable. That was his humor. That was the whole point of his humor. Except the thing about Shane is he took it a little too far. That was his thing. His videos were always about taking it way too far. Around this era of YouTube, it was very popular to do skits and have characters. And YouTube videos were more so structured like mini webisodes. A good example of this is Smosh, where a lot of their videos used to be just skits or just doing whatever. So of course, since this was a popular thing to do, Shane Dawson also had story times, skits, and would tell his his story times and do these skits through characters and his characters were very very famous but for all the wrong reasons Shanene was a negative caricature of a black woman which by the way Shane Dawson didn't even come up with the character it was heavily inspired by Martin Lawrence's character Shanene which by the way both are incredibly offensive and can we talk about how there's always a market out there of men making fun of women of color I'm so over it and this wasn't the only character that made fun of people of color. He also dressed as Wendy Williams. He also dressed up as Randy Jackson. He would include a lot of underaged people into his skits that were wildly inappropriate, as well as song parodies that were very questionable. And a lot of his skits had to do with him making fun of underage actors from Disney Channel or Nickelodeon. I remember someone in middle school tried showing me a skit from Shane Dawson and he was making fun of Selena Gomez and Wizards of Waverly Plays. I just thought it was a guy making fun of Wizards of Waverly Plays. And I think back to the skit, I realized that it was a grown man making fun of Selena Gomez as a teenager. And his jokes were so rancid and inappropriate. And it's no wonder because of now Shane Dawson's content has barely now come into light. And basically he gets canceled every other year because there's so much stuff that he did in his early career that is like, why did no one try to stop him? Oh wait, people did try to stop him. In fact, there was a lot of creators of color and people who would call him out on his content. And eventually Shane and his cult-like fandom protected this man for such a long time and supported him for such a long time that he eventually was able to make a movie, which got horrible, horrible feedback. The movie was made in 2014 and it was called Not Cool which actually starred Drew Monson, Lisa Schwartz, Shirami Lei, I think that's how you say her name, a bunch of other actors, and of course Shane Dawson as one of his characters in the movie. The movie's plot um, by description let me just read this. It says, <clears throat> A group of teenagers from Pittsburgh spend their Thanksgiving break experimenting in love, friendship, partying, and sex. Wow, very original. So original, in fact, that I got a 3.9 out of 10 on IMDb. This movie was also seen as incredibly problematic as soon as it was launched, mostly because he had a lot of people pretending to have disabilities in the movie and kind of made them into jokes. And this movie started off its own whole other controversy way later down the line, I think literally like last year, because the movie Not Cool was based off of a story of another author and it was part of like this film contest. And this film contest was based on the reality TV show called The Chair. It's a stars reality series where filmmakers such as Shane Dawson and Anna Martimucci, also known as A.M. Lucas, were given the same script and source material and a small budget to create a feature film based off of those resources. And thus, the movie Not Cool by Shane Dawson was made, and then the film Holidaysburg by A.M. Lucas was made. But of course, the film Not Cool gained a lot more recognition because it was associated with Shane Dawson, who already had a fan base. Aside from the movie being completely terrible, racist, and ableist, he was also apparently a nightmare to work with when making the film. And he completely botched the script and the original intentions for the film. And when he was called out for it, even then, he didn't cave in and said that everyone was being sensitive. And I mentioned many, many times the is a problem for people. So if we just like lose that, I'm just saying. I'm not taking anything out of the movie to please a bunch of out of work actors in Pittsburgh should be lucky to get an audition for a feature film. I no director has ever taken anything out of a movie to get someone to audition. I'm angry that we're finding out about this two days before we start filming. I think you guys can tell that 
There's a pattern going on here. These are not the only controversies that Shane has been a part of. There is so much that I could say and tell you guys, but honestly, it is far too much. Another one has to do with him making these shock factor comments on this podcast where it included minors and in just very distasteful jokes and just stuff like that that just... I personally don't want to go too deep into because <laughs> I don't want to and because it's just disturbing to talk about. But like I said, year after year, Shane Dawson gets canceled. He himself acknowledged on the H3H3 podcast that he gets canceled every other year because he himself acknowledges that he's done a lot of horrible things. So he took a really long break and came back with what a lot of people know Shane Dawson as now, which is the super long videos that are kind of like a mockumentary or documentary. And even though these videos were taken incredibly well, I mean, these got millions and millions of views, thousands and thousands of likes. People were keeping up with these series. The content itself within these series was still problematic. The first series being about none other than Jeffree Star, then about Jake Paul, and then back to Jeffree Star where they collapsed to make a palette and Shane made fat stacks from that, which was so long and so unnecessary. And out of all the people, really? Jeffree Star? This was around Dramageddon, so in the trailer for these mini Jeffree Star docuseries included Tati's apology, which by the way, they never addressed at all in the series. It was literally just for clickbait. And oh my God, I feel like I can make a video on the Shane Dawson Jeffree Star series just by itself because there's so much wrong with it, but I'm not because someone has already done that and way better than me and that is actually D'Angelo Wallace. So if you guys want to figure out everything that's wrong with that series, go ahead and watch D'Angelo's video. I really recommend it. He does an amazing job dissecting everything, but I will reiterate some of his points. Number one being how unbearable Shane acts throughout the entire series and how he pretends to be poor. And the two things that make him incredibly unbearable is one, he's an empath, guys. And two, he's poor. I am poor. <laughs> like really poor. You see this? This is his house. You think a rich person would live here? Absolutely not. You literally bought someone a whole ass new car. You made millions off of the palette collaboration with Jeffree Star. If that's being poor to you, you should give me your money. You clearly aren't grateful for it anyways. It was so distasteful when he was crying on Jeffree Star's shoulder because he was afraid of making so much money with the pallets while the minimum waged workers in the factory were working on their damn pig pallets. I can't. And then came the series of Jake Paul, which slowly turned into the Logan Paul series. And that created an entirely new mess because the video was basically Shane Dawson hiring a so-called therapist for her to secretly diagnose him with a psychopath disorder without him realizing it. Alongside with spooky editing to seem like having this disorder is something terrifying and abnormal and whatever. Just don't get it. People always want to talk about mental health this, mental health that. You should normalize mental health. Yet in the same breath, be slurch basically anyone who has mental illness. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to take a break for my mental health. You know, I'm going to try to get right step away from social media and the toxicity and realign with myself. And then there's a huge difference between mental illness, something that is literally life debilitating. It impacts your daily life. It's a lot heavier than people think. And for some reason, no one wants to talk about it because mental illness is a lot heavier and not as pretty as mental health. And the reason why I bring that up is because Shane Dawson took that approach in his Jake Paul series. I feel like social media has made this whole mental health journey and mental health awareness into another marketing thing and has attached an aesthetic to it where mental health makes you think of black and white tumblr photos with a quote when in reality mental illness is like actually pretty debilitating and no one wants it and that's coming from someone like me who has a dissociative personality diagnosis yeah not fun at all everyone wants to hear i'm taking a break from my mental health i'm gonna go drink some tea and feel better i'll be back guys but no one wants to hear hey i'm taking a break from my mental illness which means i have to take the right meds i have to go to therapy 
I blew up at this person and now I have to apologize and make things right with them. I have to get right with myself. That is the reality of a lot of mental illnesses, especially from my experience, and it's not pretty at all. And that's why a lot of people don't want to normalize that part of mental illness and mental health. And I get so frustrated because Shane Dawson approached it in a way where mental illness is something that is scary, like these people are abnormal. You have to be careful around them. Like, if you guys are gonna do the whole mental awareness thing and try to pretend like you care about people's mental health, then do it for all disorders. Do it for all diagnoses. The math ain't mathing. So a lot of people had a lot of beef with those docuseries. He briefly acknowledged it, but not really. And then we had the grand finale, which was not another docuseries, but instead an apology video, which was his taking accountability video, which he just stole the thumbnail and concept of the video from Jenna Marbles because Jenna Marbles apology video was the only apology video to ever be received well. And so Shane was like, oh, finally, I have my way out. But in reality, no one was accepting it. In the first half of the video, he talks about how he's sorry for all the bad that he's done and that he knows he's developing a new fan base and that there's people who are finding out stuff about him that's not so good. Then in the second half, he talks about how his life was hard, that he didn't know any better, yada yada. His apology video wasn't taken very good. And because of this, he disappeared for quite a while. In fact, he disappeared for about a year. But before his haunting of Shane Dawson video, I would say like, five months prior to that video, he was slowly making his way back into the social media world by being featured in Ryland's YouTube videos, posting on his YouTube community tab line again. He was still selling merch, by the way, and even promoting his merch. And everyone was getting this feeling that he was about to make a big comeback. And after people making these theories that he was gonna come back, he eventually did. And he came back with a video called The Haunting of Shane Dawson, which was posted barely a month ago. And just when everyone thought the cycle of Shane Dawson trying to come back and being immediately exiled would happen again, it didn't. The Haunting of Shane Dawson garnered 6.1 million views and 400,000 likes. In fact, him coming back was taken extremely well. And this is kind of why I'm making this video. The comments on this video were people calling out the internet itself for being hypocrites. It's scary how quick our generation is to cancel someone and then immediately backtrack. A lot of people said, if Shane posted another conspiracy video, I'll still watch. A lot of people said, if Shane posted another conspiracy video, I'd still watch it, even if he is canceled, but nobody was actually expecting him to actually post once again. This should be interesting. Wow, I'm shocked at the complete 180 everyone has done on their feelings about him. This guy is one of the most interesting cases in social media ever. Another person comments, I think this is proof that cancel culture isn't a thing. I remember specifically reading a comment that said, Shane thinks he'd just be able to post another video and that everyone will just forget about the drama, but that won't happen. Dot dot dot. Now look at this. I am a big believer that cancel culture doesn't work on anyone that isn't a smaller influencer, a person of color, or a person that is marginalized. I genuinely believe that if you are white or a man, you are good to go. Cancel culture can't touch you. I personally was not a person who believed that if Shane Dawson came back, he was gonna be canceled again. I was believing in the patterns, which is, oh, Shane Dawson gets canceled every other year. But I've talked about this before in my videos where I just, don't think cancel culture ever really does its job when it comes to people who truly deserve it. I think there are very few cases where it has officially worked for people who have been in power. When it comes to people such as Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Tana Mongu, Shane Dawson, all these people who are in power who are white and have white privilege, no matter how many times they're canceled, they just come back and better than ever. And it is completely ridiculous to me that this keeps happening. One of these YouTubers filmed a body that was no longer living and he still somehow has a career. Cancel culture didn't get him. Oh, he's not even touched. Not, no, oh, nothing, nothing was ruined for him. In fact, he's doing good. He's out here even advancing his career in another realm. He's doing good. And the same thing is going to happen for Shane Dawson. I guarantee you guys a million percent that he is going to be fine. It isn't me talking in a vengeful state of, he, he doesn't deserve this. It's not fair. He's a horrible person. He deserves to be punished. He deserves to be socially exiled. We need to bring back the guillotine. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that in order to put things into perspective for you guys, if Shane was a regular dude with a regular schmegular job, if he wasn't an influencer, he 
could, should, and would be fired from his job if content like that resurfaced, if he was a regular person, yes or no, he would 100% be canceled. And that's because cancel culture, again, like I said, only works with people who have no resources. Him being canceled on the internet didn't ruin his life. If anything, he was still getting sales from his collaboration with Jeffree Star. Trust me, y'all, his one year break was fine. He was living lavish. People forget that behind this, I'm an empath, I'm poor persona, it is a person in power who has influence. He's a grown man who has money. He has friends and family. He does not care about you. The reason why people like Shane Dawson can get away with these things is because of that because he is a person in power, because he has money. And the thing about Shane Dawson and people like Shane Dawson, they don't want you to see that. They don't want you to see through the facade they're creating. Because as soon as that illusion is broken, you realize, ah, you're a regular person just like me. It's just the fact that you can hide behind a camera and do these things. So why aren't you facing the consequences like a regular person? People get so emotionally attached to YouTubers um, and you know develop these parasocial relationships with these YouTubers that they forget Liza Koshy is not your friend. David Dobrik is not your friend. Shane Dawson does not feel empathy for you. They are here to entertain the public. Matter of fact, do you guys remember this tweet? When is Shane Dawson gonna realize wearing ripped up dirty smelly t-shirts isn't cute, it's disgusting. And that tweet got 13,000 likes. But Shane Dawson responded with, that's what I wore to bed. Sorry that I'm not wearing a $200 hoodie and pretending to be something that I'm not. How about you celebrate authenticity instead of crapping on someone who actually has a soul? Guys, Shane Dawson is right. He doesn't wear a $200 hoodie. He wears a $600 hoodie. Look, man, it's okay to be rich. If you can afford a life in luxury, good on you. Just stop pretending like you're poor because you're really not. You know there's a way of being proud of the money that you've earned without being an ass and without flexing? Or maybe it's perhaps you feel guilty that you've made that money because you made all that money profiting off of marginalized and oppressed groups. I feel like people very often misconstrue the concept of being rich. For me, being rich is being able to afford time, leisure. If you have the time to do things that you love, you have the time to do something besides worry about bills, you're rich. And it's just so insane to me that he just never acknowledges his privilege. My parents came from nothing and I grew up very poor. So did Shane Dawson. But the difference is, even though I am nowhere in comparison to being as big as Shane Dawson or making that money, I know that I'm privileged enough to not work on a Friday and be able to go to Target and buy something for myself or even take a Wednesday off to focus on doing music. That for me is a privilege. Bro, Shane Dawson doesn't even have hobbies. My man's is living and breathing for free on this earth. The number one worry for him is people not liking him on the internet. That is literally a privilege. If your number one stressor is what people think about you while you're just chilling in your backyard swimming pool, I would say that's a pretty good ass life to me. In the words of Patrizia Gucci, it's better to cry in a Rolls Royce than to be happy on a bicycle. In other words, people who got money, their only stressor in life are the people who stand in front of it, who stand in front of that stream of income. That's why cancel culture is so scary to people who are in power. They don't care about people canceling them they care about well who's gonna buy my merch now because if this was truly a situation about disappointing fans he wouldn't have done half of the things that he did in the first place and i know at this point i'm just ranting but like i said in the beginning of this video i'm gonna rant because i'm just so disappointed that this keeps happening people who are in power people who have money who are big like big big they seem to get away with absolutely everything and it's absolutely ridiculous. The truth is his fan base is very large and a lot of them were in hiding. Let's just be honest. A lot of them were in hiding because they were too ashamed to admit that they still supported him. They came out of hiding as soon as the man posted another video and they ate it up. And the way his fan base protects him, like he is this sensitive, soft, vulnerable empath like, guys, leave him alone. He did mistakes. Y'all are forgetting that he's a grown-ass millionaire man. Hello? Hello. Are we not on the same page? Not even. At this point, we're reading different books. But it's time that you guys return it because this is a mess. Do I think Shane Dawson should be canceled again? 
I, I'm not in charge of the cancel culture. I think he is going to continue to be canceled every other year because it seems that he as a person has not changed at all. He said he learned from his mistakes, that he won't do it again. Yet in his new Haunting of Shane Dawson series, there's still so much crap in that that is completely ridiculous. First of all, in these series, he takes clips from other YouTubers and doesn't give them credit at all. He just spruces them in randomly and doesn't even make their app visible. It's just there. Second, the whole video, his attitude is incredibly passive aggressive throughout the entire video, making funny remarks about how he was canceled and that no one likes him anymore. You know damn well that you're fine. You have a lot of fans. Literally, when you came back on Instagram after a year to do your first picture in a while after a year, you got a million likes. We're just in hiding, sis. And three, his whole series is literally him profiting off of trauma and torture of indigenous people. Now that's a really big statement, isn't it? All right, let me explain. Basically, the three-part series is based off the legend of the third bridge in Colorado. The third bridge is supposedly haunted by the spirits of the Native Americans who lost their lives during a massacre. It occurred around the same time as Sand Creek. And supposedly, if you go there, you can still hear their drums and you can see them riding on horses still. And so the video is about Shane Dawson and his family going to visit that. And supposedly they get scared because they can hear the drums and a little girl crying. As if that's not already bad enough. The reason why Third Bridge is considered scary is because unfortunately the lives of two teenagers were lost by crashing into the bridge. Which in the documentary that Shane Dawson made also talks about that. And look, I'm not against the whole spooky, ooky, kooky type of stuff or horror themed things. Now I'm going to say this. I know for a fact I'm going to get canceled, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it. It does not settle right in my spirit when people profit off of the tragedies of other people, especially if you had nothing to do with it. And especially if you're not commemorating them, if you're not honoring them or bringing light and love to them. This again is just a problem I have with Shane Dawson where he is so obsessed with the whole horror, scary aesthetic to the point where it warps his perceptions on the tragic loss of indigenous people's lives to innocent teenagers and even mental illness. There is a balance in these things and it just seems that Shane never gets it right. I am not going to dissect these videos because I don't even want to give him the time or attention. Um, but if you guys want to see uh, people that I really trust and I think they did a very good job dissecting and calling Shane Dawson out in these three-part you know, new documentary series that he made, I strongly recommend watching the video. I watch Shane Dawson's second video so you don't have to by Green Is Not Nick. And also the video, Shane can't make one good video, let alone another series, The Haunting of Shane Dawson by Nick DiRamio. They both say a lot of things that I want to say in this video, but they definitely constructed it way better than I could and they actually dissect the entire video which is really cool because I didn't do that so definitely go give those a watch and literally throughout the entire video and literally throughout the entire video Shane and his um little posse were talking about indigenous people as if they were these mystical strange creatures indigenous people here in America already have to deal with the fact that um, hello, their land was taken from them, but now they have to deal with Shane Dawson, the poor empath, making videos about them. Like, will they ever get a break? Can we stop talking about indigenous folk as if they are these extinct creatures when they're literally human and they're still here to this day? And the worst part is that he literally acknowledges that what he's basing his video on is wrong. Shane Dawson literally says in his docuseries, well, isn't it bad that I'm doing this and I'm a white man because they were talking about how exploitative the whole thing was. And then they all started laughing it off. This literally proves that Shane is gaslighting his audience into still believing this whole poor empath. He doesn't know anything about the real world. He's clueless guys, like character that he's made and just how much he doesn't want to acknowledge the privilege that he has. And throughout the entire docuseries, they keep pointing out how sad the tragedy is and how horrible it is, yet they're still making the damn video. You could have chose anything you could have chose anything to do the video on yet you chose yet again just like in the beginning of your career to profit off of marginalized groups who gave you that damn mansion that you have in the first place honestly i'm so over it and i can't even 
tell you guys that there is a solution to this because the truth is people are going to do whatever they want to do no matter what if they want to support him they're going to support him no matter what no matter how many times we try to cancel someone there's going to be people behind us unraveling our work these are things that are unfortunately completely out of our control and yeah it honestly kind of sucks but I think that it's important to at the least acknowledge that Shane hasn't changed as much as you guys think. And that many times, cancel culture doesn't do its job. And if anything, only ever cancels people who are part of marginalized groups. When people were telling me, please talk about Shane Dawson, and like DMing me like, can you please talk about Shane Dawson's comeback and like why it's wrong, like what is your opinion on it? I held off on talking about it. First, because I wanted to see what he wanted to do with his series. I don't like speaking on things too soon because you never know what's going to happen. And I'm glad that I waited because Shane Dawson truly showed us that he has not changed at all. And if you guys want my opinion on it, I honestly don't care. I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants. I'm not a part of his fan base. I don't support him. I don't watch his videos. My universe, he does not exist. And honestly, that's how it is for a lot of people who end up getting canceled. Oh my bad canceled because it never even works anyways if anything they end up becoming even richer i think that at this point trying to cancel him is just such a waste of time and energy and it proves to everyone that the internet just the internet can't hold people in power accountable like i said before there are very few cases where it has worked out and thank the lord for that but very often when it comes to people like Shane Dawson, it's very hard. And I wish I could end this video telling you guys that there is a solution and an answer when it comes to situations like this. But the truth is that there just isn't. All I can say is tread carefully in the world of social media. Y'all should just focus on your own happiness. Surround yourself by positivity and light. Follow people who truly inspire you. And if you want to keep fighting that good fight, honestly, go ahead. But I think with this whole Shane Dawson situation, it has truly shown everyone that no matter how horrible a person is, there will always be someone there to support them. All I know is that I'ma be good, I'ma be back here eating my Taco Bell, binging Nick DeRamio, listening to Greta Von Fleet while eating Taco Bell and drawing. Like, that's literally all I'm gonna focus on. <laughs> this whole situation has shown the internet that some people are just immune to facing their consequences. And it really just shows the reality that life's just not fair. Had to be said. And finally, I have this off my chest. You guys know how I feel about the situation. And I do not need to acknowledge it anymore. And I can go on with my life. But of course, thank you guys still for watching. I know today's topic was more of a rant style for sure, which I barely ever do on my channel. But if you would like me to rant more, let me know what topics you guys would love for me to talk on. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram. I also make music, so follow me on my SoundCloud. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of the video, comment a duck emoji down in the comments below. But since this video was a little salty, I still want to end it on a good note because I really love you guys and I just, you know, I want us to always just be whew, not stressed out about situations that don't matter. So I still want you guys to do something very important for me, which is to enjoy today. Go do something that you love, listen to a song that makes you feel good, pick up a new hobby, call a loved one, just make sure today is a good day. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!